As a child, at my grandparents' home in Amman, Jordan, my grandmother and I, we were arranging flowers in a glass vase. When she held it up, looked at me and said, a girl is just like this clear glass. If it gets cracked for any reason, you can never fix it or glue it back. It will always be seen as cracked. And who would want a cracked vase? I looked at her terrifying face. <laughs> and because of that, I got terrified. To my grandmother, the pure, perfect glass represented the Middle Eastern girl's reputation. And a crack represents any mistake the girl does that will affect how she's perceived in the community. This story has been passed down for generations, and it became an overwhelming obstacle in my life. How could I aspire to discover my own identity, create self-worth and inner strength, develop leadership qualities like learning from my mistakes, taking risks, making decisions, if my main concern is to keep my glass vase safe from any cracks. Throughout my childhood, I was introduced to more of the traditions and strict expectations of my culture. I was taught to follow and obey. Questioning the norm, being curious or voicing my opinion was not acceptable. I learned about the limitations, not just from what I was told, but by observing the women in my family, they were silenced. My life was pre-planned on my behalf, just like generations before me. In my case, it was simple. To grow up with an unblemished reputation and then enroll at a university as a way to buy time until I was ready for marriage. Getting married early was so much more important than completing a degree or aspiring for a successful career. I got engaged when I was 19 to the most eligible bachelor in our community, and my parents were thrilled. Because of my unblemished reputation, his mom thought that I would be a great match to their family and arranged the initial introduction. I was open to this opportunity. This was what my family has been preparing me for my entire life. With my zero experience in relationships and limited self-knowledge, <laughs> I was charmed. We got married when I was 20 and moved to San Diego, California to follow his career aspirations. I thought that with this marriage and the move to the U.S., I could finally be allowed to discover my own identity and be respected for who I truly am, far away from the culture. I could finally grow beyond my vase. Instead, the limitations were getting bigger and the expectations were more strict. Living in the U.S. was just a matter of geography. That marriage was not a partnership. I felt like his property, there to serve him and his family, completely controlled by them. Even with my disappointment, I lived the life that was expected of me. But years later, I found that I was struggling. I was feeling empty, unhappy, and lost. I started to question my own identity and my purpose in life, but I was not getting any satisfying answers. In addition to my own internal conflict, I was also facing a culture shock. I was observing my new community of Americans. You acted differently than I was accustomed to. You looked confident. You seemed free. You didn't seem to have any fears related to cracking your glass vase. <laughs> All I wanted was to be like you. I knew that something needed to change. I could no longer continue to live with these limitations. I needed to give myself permission to break away and leave behind the barriers and a controlling, oppressive marriage. But that would require a major shattering of my world. It would result in sharp pieces of glass flying everywhere, 
cascading out of control and causing pain to everyone involved. I was scared. Scared of taking the risk. Scared of bringing shame and dishonor to my family. I was mainly scared of being disowned by my parents. And I was warned that such a decision would not be tolerated and would create a very dangerous situation for me where my safety would be at risk. One day, I woke up too depressed to even get out of bed. And all I could do was just stare at the wall. I was 25, and I felt that my life was over. There was nothing left to aspire to. And that was the moment. That's when I realized that I have a choice. I could either choose to continue to live satisfying everyone around me or live for me. I chose me. I packed and I left. That night, I went to bed knowing that I cracked the vase. And as terrified as I was, I knew that I made the right choice. I can tell you this, it was the most painful time of my life. It turned out to be so much worse than I've ever imagined. <laughs> Not only did some family member disown me, but one even attempted to have me killed. It was a great example to give to anyone else who's interested in breaking any limitations. At that point, I needed to recreate my life from scratch. And in the process, I had to disconnect and disbelieve in everything. And I mean everything in order to finally hear my own voice and find my true self. A critical part of my transformation was to change how I perceived my story, from a young girl filled with fears and haunted by expectations into a new woman, self-empowered, confident, and responsible for her own choices. But I didn't know how to do that. It was obvious that I needed to start by working on my self-worth. And I decided to lean on education, and I enrolled in a master's in business program at the University of San Diego. After my first semester, a professor, Dr. Starling, approached me and encouraged me to run for the president of the student organization. <laughs> I laughed, and my immediate response was, I don't know how to be a leader. I was actually wondering what he was thinking about. But I'll commit to attending the events that the organization will plan in the future. In other words, I was really good in being a follower. <laughs> he didn't give up. And I finally agreed to run, and to my surprise, I was elected. I didn't realize then that this one commitment, as terrifying as it was, would change me for the rest of my life. A journey of my own leadership discovery just started. Two years later, armed with a master's in business, I graduated with my newly discovered passion for leadership. I joined a global company and attended or participated a selective leadership development program lived and traveled around the world, and got the privilege to work for and be mentored by senior executives. These building blocks gave me the foundation that I needed. Soon, I was managing global teams and responsible for strategic client relationships. I found myself wanting to empower everyone around me with the new skills that I was developing. I started to travel to teach leadership courses around the globe, <laughs> and I was sought out as a mentor. Now, it is my opportunity to give back and find ways to help people across cultures discover their potential, but mainly help them to transform the fears and limitations that are stopping them. One thing I know for a fact, we are all living with limitations, 
regardless of our background. They come with different colors or shapes, but they all have the same effect of inhibiting us from living the life that we deserve. Whether they're cultural, family-specific, gender or ethnic, or internal limitations that we individually impose on ourselves. It's the negative voice in our head that's telling us we're not good enough, smart enough, successful enough, or with the right height or shape. We allow these limitations to inhibit us, not realizing that we had the choice to break them all along. Shattering my limitation was the best decision of my life. <laughs> I learned that as I helped, well, the only way I found how to tackle my limitations was with self-discovery. The more I connected internally, the more I was able to handle the external noise and programming. It's still a challenge and a process to give myself the time and space to hear my own voice and dig deep even when external and internal limitations appear to be stronger than me. I learned that an essential part of my life's journey is to become who I truly am. That's when I started living not by what I was told, but by what I chose. I've been asked how I planned my transformation, and the truth is, I did not have a plan. All I had was a vision of a different life. And I marched towards it by taking small steps, doing the best with what I got at the moment, facing the fears that showed up, and then envisioning the next step. It's about the courage and determination to continue to move forward even when it got tough and when the external and internal limitations appeared to be stronger than me. I would not have been able to have a transformation story without all the people that showed up in my life and guided me through this process. Just like Dr. Starling, they saw my leadership potential at a time that I did not realize it. They took the time to mentor me, and I'm forever grateful for that. These are the leaders that I admire and the ones that I aspire to be like. There's so many people out there, like me, 14 years ago when I cracked my vase in need of our help and guidance. I learned that as I helped others, I was transforming and evolving with them too. Giving back is such a rewarding and joyful experience. To my grandmother, the pure, perfect glass represented my honor and my reputation. However, to me, it represents the unrealistic limitations that I choose not to obey. I look around the room and I wonder, what limitations are you living with? Who told you not to follow your dream? Who told you not to be yourself? What is holding you back? Is it your culture, a relationship, a job, or is it you? Are you living with the expectations to protect your glass vase? Each of us has a choice. We could keep our glass vase perfect, accept an empty life, disconnected from our authentic self, and then pass it to the future generations. Or simply smash it. Smash it into a million pieces. Smash it with all the fears, worry, and shame that it represents. What would you choose? 